Hello and happy, happy Tuesday. My name is Wendy Lee. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. and very excited that you're joining me again today for a little bit of paper crafting fun in the studio. Yes? Yay! All right, I think I have a fun one for you today. Um, it is ocean inspired and we are pulling in a couple of different products and combining them so that you can see how awesome the um, really just the coordination of Stampin' Up! products are. So we'll start that in just one moment. Yes? All right. I'm so glad you're here today. You're having a good week, I hope. Yes? All right. Let's go ahead and switch the camera over for some crafty fun, right? Mm -mm. There we are. That's what we're going to be working on today. Hey, Jean. So glad you're here. So we are going to be creating this, I think it's really, really pretty, um, ocean inspired card. And, um, you know, you could change your color combo up um, and give it a different feel. You could change your sentiments. But I love this layout. Um, and I think that this is a collage card that you can make for so many different occasions. Um, and then we brought the design to the inside as well. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this. We are featuring the Seascape stamp set. The coordinating, uh, I'm gonna say it wrong, Sea Life Dies, which these are super cool. All of these are super cool. And then we're bringing in the layering diorama because they are so much fun and work well with this. And the Waves of the Ocean designer series paper and then the uh, Waves rhinestone jewels. So um, the Waves designer series paper and the jewels are only available while supplies last. Last I checked earlier, they are still available, so you can still purchase these, but um, I'm not sure how long the inventory will last. It's while supplies last, so if you love these, definitely get them. Um, we've had a great response to our Waves of the Ocean stamp camp, and while the stamp camp itself is closed, you can purchase that PDF tutorial. So it is uh, a 12 project PDF tutorial that has cards and more, so much more. All right, so let me move this out of the way. And let's go ahead and get started in creating today's project. So this project was inspired by one um, created by Tammy Hewlett, and I really like her style, um, but kind of took it down a notch a little bit. She had added some watercoloring techniques, um, and so I've changed this up just a smidge uh, to suit my taste and to make it a little bit faster and easier to create, right? So I want you guys to see all the great details. So look at that embossed layer in the back. That's vellum that we're gonna emboss. There's a little Stella on our coral. We've got some blending brushes going on and that's on some shimmer white cardstock. There's, we've brought in that waves of the ocean paper and the gems, a little embossed sentiment, a little bit of mesh, fun, right? And then the details on the inside as well. Those fish are cut right out of that designer series paper so you can add some variation and color to those. Fun, right? All right, let's go ahead and get started. So I am starting off with a petal pink card base and I'll go in and add in all the complete supply list so that you, you can see exactly what you need to purchase if you don't already have what you want to use to create this card. Um, so there'll be links, you can just go right into my online store and shop. And then there will also be the complete supply list, uh, or sorry, cut dimensions. I already said supply list. So you'll have everything you need to recreate this. And you could even use the products that you have on hand if you prefer. Um, you could change this up a little bit and it would still be a lot of fun. So, all right, so here is my basic petal pink card base. And I've done a top fold today. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is bring in my vellum cardstock layer. And this is where I have run this through the emboss machine with this stripes and splatters embossing folder. So this comes in a two pack, stripes and, and splatters. So here's stripes, here's splatters. Um, they are 3D embossing folders, so they are a little bit thicker. Um, and these work fabulously with our Stampin', our mini Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine that's on special right now. So this is our little bitty machine. And these fit perfectly and are made to work with this machine. So the mini Stampin' Cut and Emboss is on special this month. So you can get that 20% off, which is a great, great savings. All right, so let me go ahead and we're going to, I'm not gonna put this layer down just yet because you can see through vellum. 
So I'm going to lay it in place, but I'm not going to adhere it down. Now, I could go ahead and run some adhesive right in the middle here, and I might choose to do that at some point. Right now, I'm just going to lay it there, and we'll see uh, as this evolves as we get our layers, right? All right. Next, I'm bringing in the layering diorama dies, and I have got my waves of the ocean paper that I have cut out with this fourth largest die in that layering diorama, okay? Next, I've got my coral. So I used my sea life dies and I cut out three pieces of the coral. Isn't that cool, all the texture that adds on that? Now this Seascapes bundle is yet another one that is um, on the current list right now for discount. So you can get this at a discount, which is really, really cool. And then we've got this die here I used to cut, this is shimmer white cardstock. I don't know if you guys can see this. So it's a shimmery finish to it. I really, really like this one. But you can see this, design, this die is attached actually in a couple of spots. So the fish and the seahorse actually come out that way. They don't cleanly cut it all the way around which gives you a lot of fun ways to use these dies. I'm gonna clip this apart. I'm gonna show you how I do that in just a moment. All right, so now that we've got those pieces, let's go ahead and move our card base out of the way and let's prep some of these. So I wanna go ahead and clip this apart. Actually, nope, I'm gonna add color before I clip it apart. So let's go ahead and bring in, first of all, let me bring in my coral because I want to add some Wink of Stella to add a little shimmer to my coral. So I'm just going to scribble on and it doesn't have to be fully covered. You can cover it as much or as little as you want. And I'm just doing this right on my silicone craft sheet because that'll wash off later. And so no worries with that. Plus this is good. If I decide I need to squeeze my Stella, it's always great to squeeze it when you're over the top of the silicone craft sheet because sometimes this will pool and can kind of leave a big mess if you get a whole bunch of it that comes out at once. You know how that works, right? Anytime you have a liquid and you squeeze, I don't know about your luck, but I tend to end up with a big blob when I don't want a big blob. All right, so those will dry for just a moment. So that's gonna add a little fun shimmer to our coral. And then I'm gonna bring in a scrap piece of paper. I've got one here. And I'm gonna apply some color to this. So let me start off with my petal pink ink pad. And I wanna just apply a little bit of color. I wanna make sure this is cleaned off. Yep, so I am taking a blending brush and just picking up a little bit of that color. And I'm gonna turn this because I wanna work backwards. So I'm gonna start off the edge and I'm just going to use a circular motion. I find that works best for me. You do what makes you happy, right? And I'm just going to add some of that pink tone to this little seahorse here. Okay, so you see that? I've got it, got it a little over halfway over. You can kind of see that coloring. All right, now I'm going to switch colors. I'm going to go add head and add some Calypso coral. Oh, this time of year, allergies. Who else is having allergy trouble? Yes crazy. All right, so I'm going to just tap off a little bit of that dark color. And I want to just put this coral right on that outer edge. Really give those, um, I'm sure there's a, a correct technical name, the spiny things. <laughs> just give them a little more depth of color. Now, I could have clipped this first. And the reason I decided not to do that is that this gives me a really easy way to hold on to this while I'm applying this color. So that's why I'm going to clip it after the fact. All right, so we'll put that away. We don't need that. Oh, and blending brushes. If you don't know about blending brushes, these are awesome. These have so many soft bristles, just jam packed in there. They're soft, they're luscious, they're velvety. So they allow us to add color really, really nicely um, to our project. So I'm just gonna, I'm just rubbing this right on my scrap to get some of that ink, that excess ink off um, so that I can use it again. Um, with another color. Now you can wash these, a little soapy water will work. 
but I will tell you, you want to let them completely dry before you put them in uh, another ink pad, okay? I right, move that out of our way. Let's go ahead and clip this little guy apart. So I'm just going where it's connected still, and I'm just gonna make a little clip with my paper snips. Okay, so that side's loose, and then we are connected here at the tail or the back fin, whichever way you wanna call that. I'm gonna clip that, and I'm gonna clip right there as well. So now I've separated that. And then this would make a really cool um, piece to use on a project as well. You could even do this blending technique. And if you did it on a regular piece of cardstock underneath and then laid it back over the top, you'd have that negative image in there. Wouldn't that be cool? I should have done that. I didn't think about it. Oh, you have this bundle and you haven't used it? Oh, it's such a good one. Such a good one. Yeah, you definitely want to pull it out. All right. Let's go ahead and kind of build this little diorama shape. So I can put them on there like that, or I can flip it over. I think I'm gonna flip it over. I think I want it more like this, right? So let's add a little liquid glue. I'm gonna bring back in my craft sheet because I could make a big mess here. Now I could have cut this with adhesive sheet on the back, but I, um, I like it to not be totally flat, right? So if it curls up a little bit, on the uh, sheet, I'm okay with that. I kind of like the height that it gives. So I'm just adding a little bit of glue into some select spots. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little on this tail here, just so it's not too crazy, maybe a little bit up here. All right, and then we are just gonna plop this right down. Let's see how I wanna do this. I kind of think I want it like that. It's different than the last one, but it's, but it's still going to be cute. I promise, right? <laughs> all right, let's double check this. So again, we don't have our vellum down yet because I want to see where all my layers are going to fall first. So I put this little guy here, right? And then I can work in my coral as well. You know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop this up on the front. I don't want to get my dimensionals too close to the edge because I want to be able to slide in my coral. So I might be a little excessive with the number, but I want to make sure it's nice and stable. But again, I'm not going too close to the edge because I want to give room. Oh, good. You've got the C day, seize the day dies. Yes, those would go awesome with this, uh, this waves of the ocean collection as well. I just love how everything coordinates and, and you can mix and match. Stamp Up does such a great job with that. All right, so now that I've got this down on the vellum, I can come back here and I'm just going to use liquid glue. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to use liquid glue to attach that right to my card base because you need your adhesive to fall so that it's gonna be covered by the elements that you're putting down. Otherwise, it's, it could show through to the front of the card. So vellum, you can see through a little bit. I get that a little bit of a push. Now I could have put that down and guessed where my adhesive was, was needing to be. It probably would have been, been okay, but um, this made me feel a little bit better doing it this way. All right, so now I'm gonna work in some of this coral. So I'm just gonna slide it in I'm putting it on top of the vellum, but I want it to fall underneath that little wave. And so I might have to tear off some edges. I might, might not have got my um, dimensionals in quite far enough to be able to just slide that up in there, or I might have, you know? You just have to watch the edges of your card base to make sure that that is not gonna cause you a problem. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of liquid adhesive on this. And again, if you wanted it to be um, completely flat, you could put adhesive sheet on the back of this before you die cut it, and it would make it a you know like a sticker that you just literally peel and stick it right down to your card, and then it would be nice and flat, and you wouldn't be making the mess that I'm making with the adhesive right now. All right, me and liquid glue not always friends. Okay, so that one's in there, cute. And then this one, I think I'm gonna need to, no, I think I can get that in without clipping it. Maybe. Yeah, if I turn it a little bit, that'll work. All right, so I'm only gonna put adhesive 
on this under part, maybe I won't make as big of a mess with it. Adhesive and I don't always get along, at least this adhesive, right? <laughs> it's not always my friend. So again, I'm trying to get my edges so that they are tucked in. There we go. Got it. I want them inside that edge so I can still put this in an envelope if I want. Cute. It's already cute. I love it. All right. Next, I'm just going to take a little bit of stamp and seal and I'm going to put it just right here. I know you can see it. It's a mess. I know. I'm just going to lay this mesh right down in that. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and work on our sentiment next. So I've got a piece of Pacific Point. And we're going to go ahead and emboss this. Oh, hey, Jennifer, so glad you came in. So if you still have an embossing buddy, which is an anti-static talc powder pouch, you can use that if you want to first. Um, I don't know if it's critical, but I do like to use it if I have one. And then I brought out my really gross looking Versamark pad. This is one that has been around for a long time and has seen some crazy techniques. Let's see if I can get this straight. Not bad, I'll take it. This out of the way. And let's bring in our white embossing powder. Love uh, embossing in white on dark color, darker colored cardstock. It's fun, adds a nice contrast. I think it'll be a good contrast to that blue uh, background we've got going on there. So I think you're gonna see on this one, this version is gonna be a little bit bolder just because that wave, that diorama cut paper in the back is going to show that. All right, so I'm just going to heat this with the heat tool. So I have an old, old, old heat tool. I've had it for a long, long time. It is Stampin' Up, but uh, the newer one is much safer. This is completely covered. It has two heat levels on it, a high and a low. Hey, Terry, so glad you're here. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat this up. So you hold it about an inch, inch and a half away from your cardstock, and you're just waiting for the powder to melt. So you don't have to do this. Just let it heat up and you can slowly move it. Ben, you can do that if you want. I think it takes longer, but whatever makes you happy, right? All right, so let's go ahead and heat this up and melt the powder. Here we go, it's starting to change. Since I didn't grab my tweezers, I'm gonna flip that. All right, cool. Hopefully that caught on video so you guys could see, um, see, see what we're doing. They've turned off the heart button. What? Oh yeah, I just see, yeah, I don't know, Jean. That's weird. I'm glad you like it though. <laughs> you can put hearts in the comments. How about that? All right, so we're just gonna adhere our lovely sentiment right on there with some dimensionals. So again, like I mentioned, you could change these colors up a little bit. You could change the sentiment up a little bit and really use this for so many different occasions. It'd be a great birthday card. I think you can even use this as a sympathy card if you wanted to for somebody that is a, an ocean lover, right? Um, you know, this one's kind of a thinking of you, letting you know that we're here for you. Looks like I got a little bit of a rough edge there when I cut that. Let's see if I can clip some of that off. I'll probably just make a mess. I shouldn't touch it. There we go. I got some of the loose frayed end there. So cute, right? Let's add a little bling to finish the front off with my favorite waves, rainstones. Technically, rainstone waves, basic jewels, if you want to be correct in the description. And so I love that it's got the shades of blues and greens and all the variations in between. Since we have a lot in this color family over here, still left because I have used quite a few of these, I am just gonna choose some of these blues. I can go in and out of my color combo and we're gonna be a little bit excessive. I'm looking at these kind of like some little bubbles maybe. Let's put a lighter one up here, why not? Can we do that? Let's see. I think I'm going to put one off on this coral a little bit. 
Maybe another one right here. And why not add one more, right? Why not? Let's add one right. Mm, I'm going to add it right there. Could add some more down lower if you wanted. That one's not sticking past the mesh, but I think it's okay how it is. But yeah, you could add some more down there, but I'm going to stop there. I think that looks nice. Kind of fun, brings that blue color in. And then let's do the inside as well. All right, so for the inside, you could add a sentiment if you want to. I chose not to do that. I am just going to add this white layer of cardstock. And so this is cut the same as my vellum on the outside. So I'm bringing that same kind of appearance to the inside. My design. Oh, you have a heart button, Jennifer? Okay, well, who knows? Maybe Jean's not allowed to love anything anymore. <laughs> do you think that's true? I don't think so. All right, so we've got that down, and then let's put our coral. I'm going to have this one kind of go all the way over to the edge of the card and then hang down in there. Kind of fun, right? You guys want to see what I did on the original. This is the original one. So I'm kind of doing the same thing. Now, I could come off a little bit, get a little closer to that edge, and just clip off what I don't need as well. So let's see. Get that a little bit of liquid glue to put that down. Oh, you have the button, it just doesn't work anymore. Okay, I see. Makes sense. All right, so I'm gonna plop that down there. I'm gonna give that a moment to dry. We'll clip that off before we're done. And then I've got these two little fishies. So when you run this die, um, I just cut it right out of the designer series paper. But when you run this, you get two fish and one is facing one direction and one is facing the other. I did find when I was cutting this out of designer paper, if I wanted to have multiple fish and I wanted them facing different directions, I could do it upside down, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna slide that little guy right under there. I'm gonna slide this one just in there a little bit. So it looks like it's swimming right inside that coral. Kind of fun, right? Just a little bit of adhesive on the back. And look, you could totally change that. See that backside is a softer, set of colors, could have totally changed this up to a softer set of colors. It's just so pretty. And you know that technique I showed a few weeks ago with the Simply Marvelous paper where we added the uh, gilded leafing to give it that gold fleck. This paper would be awesome to do that with as well. I've been playing with it um, with embossing powder, but I haven't found a, a look, an appearance that I'm happy with. So have not gone down that path yet, but maybe, maybe we'll get there. All right, cute, right? Love it. So this one's a little more bold in color, but this one's a little softer in that color combination, just because I've gone deeper into the blues there. I could have changed this to navy, which would have actually been even bolder and looked really, really nice as well. Now, you can see that this vellum is starting to pull up a little bit because of I glued something else on top of it. If that bothers you, go in and slide in some glue dots, right? Just to secure that underneath where that coral is. So let's go ahead and do that. It doesn't bother me, but if it bothers you, I just wanna show you how to fix that. So as long as you're getting adhesive, there's one. Getting your adhesive so it's placed underneath that coral, you'll be able to tack that down and not see that that's happening. Nice? So let's just plop in a couple more, just to make it nice and secure. And again, as long as they're underneath those coral layers, then it should hold down really nicely. You do the same thing down here. A couple of glue dots on that. That nice and secure so that doesn't bubble up too much. Better? Happier with that? I think it looks nice. What do you guys think? Yes, good? Yay, yay. Okay, good, 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 good. So if you missed out on the Waves of the Ocean stamp camp, know that the tutorial is available on my website. If you need help finding that, please let me know. I'm happy to guide you in the right direction there. And then um, don't forget that this particular stamp and die bundle is discounted right now as part of the uh, current promotion going on now. 
the savings promotion. And uh, you can get the mini cut and emboss if you don't have that one yet and are looking for it. That is another awesome, awesome perk to the current promotion. So I do want to let you guys know that um, tomorrow, late in the day, late afternoon, um, the retiring list for our annual catalog will come out. It'll be available for demonstrators to see. I will share that via my newsletter um, as early in the day as I can. I, they were not giving us any pre sneak peek or anything on that. So I'll know when it, when it goes live. So I will work on that right away and get an email out to everybody so that you have that. Um, remember the in color items tend to sell out super quickly. Um, so our in colors that we expect to be retiring are magenta madness, just jade, um, misty moonlight, which breaks my heart, uh, cinnamon cider and bumblebee. So those are some great colors that if you don't have your re-anchors and all your card stock stocked up, uh, you might want to go ahead and get those. And you might want to order those before, um, before the sale actually is announced. I don't think they'll discount those products, um, but I guess we never really know. Um, so be look on that on the lookout for that tomorrow afternoon. It, I think it sh they share it with us around one Mountain Time, so that's about three Eastern, and then it'll take me a little bit to get it all written up and out to you. But you'll be able to see it in the online store. But I will get that out as soon as I can. I will have it posted on my website as well, but it won't be a blog post. It'll be under my rewards and specials section. All right. And then demonstrators. Tomorrow's a big day for demonstrators as well because we get to see a sneak peek of the new annual catalog. So if that breaks your heart that you're not gonna be able to see that catalog until it goes live in May and you wanna get your hands on stuff early, might, might wanna consider joining my team because we get, we get all of that good stuff early. So, all right, thank you guys so much. Hope to see you again next Tuesday for a little bit of crafting fun. All right. Thank you again. And bye for now.